Mimnimus, Greek, Mimnimus, Mimnimus was a Greek elegiac poet from either Colophon or Smyrna in Ionia, who flourished about 630–600 BC. He was strongly influenced by the example of Homer yet he wrote short poems suitable for performance at drinking parties and was remembered by ancient authorities chiefly as a love poet. Mimnimus in turn exerted a strong influence on Hellenistic poets such as Callimachus and thus also on Roman poets such as Propertius, who even preferred him to Homer for his eloquence on love themes see comments by other poets below. His work was collected by Alexandrian scholars in just two books, relatively few compared for example with the 26 books for Stesichorus and today only small fragments survive. The fragments confirm the ancient estimate of him as a consummate poet, but also indicate that he was a sturdier character than the indulgent love poet he was assumed to be by various ancient commentators. Almost no reliable, biographical details have been recorded. One ancient account linked him romantically with a flute girl who subsequently gave her name, Nano, to one of his two books. <laughs> Life and work The Byzantine Encyclopedia Suda provides a good example of the biographical uncertainties. Mimnimus, son of Ligurtiades, from Colophon or Smyrna or Astypleia, an elegiac poet. He flourished in the 37th Olympiad 632 BC and so is earlier than the Seven Sages, although some say that he was their contemporary. He was also called Ligastards because of his harmonious clarity. He wrote books. The gap indicates a corruption in the text and the original wording probably testified to two books, though the only source we have for this number was the grammarian Pomponius Porphyrion. The Suda's mention of Astypleia, an island in the southern Aegean, as a possible candidate for the poet's hometown is mere fantasy. Smyrna seems to be the most likely candidate. The nickname Ligastards was probably taken by the Suda from an elegy addressed to Mimnimus by one of the seven sages. The Athenian lawgiver and elegiac poet, Solon, see comments by other poets. Solon clearly admired the skills of the older poet, whom he addressed as Ligastards, yet he objected to his hedonism and singled out this couplet for criticism. I gar arta nuson te kai argalian melodonon hexcotite moira kichoi thanatu would that my fated death might come at sixty, unattended by sickness and grievous cares. Solon thought he should be willing to live to eighty. Plutarch was another ancient author critical of the poet's self-indulgence, dismissing one poem see fragment one in poetic style below as the utterances of intemperate people. Mimnimus however was not timid in his hedonism, as indicated by a couplet attributed to him in the Palatine Anthology, an exhortation to others to live intemperately. Enjoy yourself. Some of the harsh citizens will speak ill of you, some better. However, the same lines have also been attributed to Theognis. A robust side to his personality is shown by his versatility as a poet. Archaic elegy was often used for patriotic purposes, to screw courage to the sticking place in times of war and to celebrate national achievements, and there is ample evidence that Mimnimus assumed this role as a poet. A quote recorded by the geographer Strabo represents the earliest surviving account of the Ionian migration, celebrating the settlement of Colophon and Smyrna from Pylos, while another quote, recorded by Stobius, describes the heroic exploits of a Greek warrior against the cavalry of the Lydian king, Gyges, early in the 7th century. Mimnimus evidently hoped thereby to strengthen his countrymen's resolve against further Lydian encroachments. The name, Mimnimus, might have been chosen by his parents to commemorate a famous Smyrnian victory against Gyges near the Hermus River and yet names ending in Hermus were quite common in Ionia. He was alive when Smyrna was besieged for the final time by the Lydians under Aleuts and possibly he died with the town. The disappearance of Smyrna for the next 300 years might be the reason why Colophon was able to claim the poet as one of its own, yet Smyrna's own claim persisted and this suggests that its claim had the advantage of being true. Smyrna lay near Mount Sapillos, one of whose rocky outcrops was traditionally imagined to be the tragic figure Niobe. Like other archaic poets, Mimnimus adapted myths to his own artistic needs and Alien recorded that he attributed 20 children to Niobe, unlike Homer, for example, who attributed 12 to her. According to Salisius, Mimnimus was just as creative in his poetical account of Ismene, representing her as being killed by Tydeus at the command of the goddess, Athena, in the very act of making love to Theoclymenus. An original account that was soon accepted by an international audience, being represented on an early Corinthian amphora pictured below. Imaginative accounts of the sun, voyaging at night from west to east in a golden bed, and of Jason the Argonaut voyaging to Aed City, where the rays of the swift sun lie in a golden storeroom at the edge of Oceanus. Survive in brief quotes by ancient authors. According to Strabo, Smyrna was named after an Amazon and, according to a manuscript on Proverbs, Mimnimus once composed on the theme of the proverb, A lame man makes the best lover. 
illustrating the Amazonian practice of maiming their men. Topic: <laughs> Nano. Unlike epic and lyric verse, which were accompanied by stringed instruments, the Sathara and Barbatan respectively, elegy was accompanied by a wind instrument, the orlos, and its performance therefore required at least two people, one to sing and one to play. Ancient accounts associate Mimnimus with a female Orlos player, Nano, and one makes him her lover see quote from Hermesianax in comments by other poets below. Another ancient source indicates that Mimnimus was a pederast, which is consistent with conventional sexual themes in Greek elegy. However, as noted by Martin Litchfield West, Mimnimus could have been a pederast and yet still have composed elegies about his love for Nano. Greek pederasty was for the most part a substitute for heterosexual love, free contacts between the sexes being restricted by society." Mimnimus apparently was also capable of playing all by himself. Strabo described him as, "...both a pipe player and an elegiac poet." According to the poet Hipponax, Mimnimus when piping used the melancholy, "...fig branch strain." Apparently a traditional melody played while scapegoats were ritually driven from town, whipped with fig branches. Ancient commentators sometimes refer to a work called Nano and there is one clear reference to a work called Smyrnaes. Modern scholars have concluded that these could be the two books mentioned by Porphyrion. The Nano appears to have been a collection of short poems on a variety of themes not just love, whereas the Smyrnaes appears to have been a quasi-epic about Smyrna's confrontation with the Lydians. A cryptic comment by the Hellenistic poet Callimachus see comments by other poets below also seems to refer to those two books, commending one for sweetness and distinguishing it from the great lady. The latter seems to be a reference to Smyrnaes, whereas the sweet verses—apparently the slender, economical kind of verses on which Callimachus modeled his own poetry—appear to refer to Nano. However, the comment is preserved as an incomplete fragment and modern scholars are not unanimous in their interpretation of it. Another Callimachus fragment has been interpreted as proof that Mimnimus composed some iambic verse but this conjecture has also been disputed. Poetic style Elegy has been described as a variation upon the heroic hexameter, in the direction of lyric poetry, and, in Mimnimus, this takes the form of a variation on Homer, as appears for example in Fragment 1, quoted below, about which one modern scholar had this to say, Mimnimus dependence on Homer is striking, it is amusing to see him express such un Homeric thoughts as those of Fr.1 in language which is almost entirely Homer's. Homer's vocabulary, line endings, formulas, similes, all reappear, but from this material Mimnimus creates quite a distinctive poetry of easy grace and pleasing rhythm. Fragment 1 Tis de bios t de terpnon arda crises Aphrodites tethnari and hot noir maketi tauda meloi cryptati philides chi mylicha dora chi yun hoi hebes anthea gignati harpalia andresen e gynexen epe delta Odinaron epilthi egeras ho tau Aeskron homos kai kalan andra tai they i a min frinas amphi kakai tirusi marimnai ud augas proseran terpatai ilu all each thros men pays an atomastos de gynex and houtos argalian geras etakathi. Typically, the elegiac couplet enabled a poet to develop his ideas in brief, striking phrases, often made more memorable by internal rhyme in the shorter, pentameter line. Mimnimus employs the internal rhyme in the pentameter lines too. Moi melo and four. Here is the same poem paraphrased in English to imitate the rhythms of an elegy, with half rhymes employed in the same lines too far. Dot for and for youth Bloom What is life, what is sweet, if it is missing golden Aphrodite? Death would be better by far than to live with no time for Amorous assignations and the gift of tenderness and bedrooms All of those things that give youth all of its coveted bloom Both for men and for women but when there arrives the vexatiousness of old age, even good looks alter to unsightliness, and the heart wears away under the endlessness of its anxieties. There is no joy any more than in the light of the sun. In children there is found hate and in women there is found no respect. So difficult has old age been made for us all by God. Commenting on the poem, Maurice Bowra observed that after the challenging, flaunting opening we are led through a swift account of youth, and then as we approach the horrors of old age, the verse becomes slower, the sentences shorter, the stops more emphatic, until the poet closes with a short, damning line of summary." Of all the other early elegists, only Archilochus might be compared with Mimnimus for effective use of language, both being lifelong poets of outstanding skill. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Comments by other poets. Topic: <laughs> Solon. Addressing Mimnimus and criticizing him for his stated wish to die at sixty years of age, as quoted above in Life and Work, the Athenian sage said. Topic: Hermesianax. And Mimnimus, who, after much suffering, discovered the sweet sound and breath given off by the soft pentameter, was on fire for Nano. Topic: Callimachus. Defining the kind of poetry he liked and believed best suited to his own, much later times, the Alexandrian scholar poet commended Mimnimus thus brackets indicate gaps in the text are the two types of poetry it was his slender verses, not the big lady, that revealed Mimnimus' sweetness. <laughs> Propertius <laughs> Horace. Translations Greek Lyric, an anthology in translation by Andrew M. Miller Loeb Volume. 1 Lyric Poetry Several Fragments Translated by Steve Hayes Translation of Fragment 2 into Elegiac Couplets <laughs>